Well, what's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome to another Victor Experience podcast. Yes. We're your hosts. I'm Bishop John, and who are you? Beautiful, voluptuous, awesome, incredible, magnificent, wonderful, fantabulous woman. Who did you say you are? I'm your boo thing. That's not what you said. Though. Are you sure? Yeah. What did you think I said? You said Bishop John. I said boo thing. No, you didn't. Are you sure? I'm sure. Are you sure? Uh huh. <laughs> I said boo thing. No, you're right. <laughs> I'm her boo thing. Like, you know, I really could care less. You are more into those titles. But I am pa past no, the I care. Edmondson, I care. Who he calls his Victoria's No, Supermodel. you are my. You and again, are a. we welcome you. Welcome, welcome, yes. welcome to the Victory Experience. For those who do not know, we um we pastor one of the best churches on the planet, Victory and so Christ absolutely Christian do. Center. Yes. Located in Westville, New Jersey, Deptford Township. Ship. Um, we'd love to see your face in a place. Come and check us out. We'd love to see you. Yeah. So we're always excited to do these. We got a mm -hmm. good one today, um, what we're going to talk about. But we always enjoy these times and we try to drop content as much as we can with our schedule and traveling and all that. But we're here today. We're here. That you're yes. here. They're here. So let's let's handle it. And so um, we, we want you to like and share. First mm -hmm. of all, if you haven't done that, would you like and share and subscribe? Subscribe. We're, we get more and more people to go out. I've listened to the podcast. It's good and so forth. So subscribe because when you subscribe, you'll hear, you'll get an indicator of when we drop new content. And we know you want to be a part of that. So make sure you subscribe um, and help us get the word out, please. Get mm -hmm. the word out because I think when people hear this, it's just real life talk and it helps them in real time life application. So mm -hmm. do that. And then we always ask you to um, and, and, you know, drop things in the chat. Drop questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. Let us know that some things you want us to address. What's a topic you'd like to hear us expound on? Not saying we definitely will, but there's a good chance we will. So put that in the chat because we'd love to hear from you and say, hey, would you guys talk about this or address that? Because we'll address all types of stuff and you just might hear us address your topic. So today, let's dive in because our time, it's like I blink and it's like, man, we're out of time. You know, so what we do from time to time, because people, you know, they want to know more about us. They want to know, you know, just personal things. You know, one thing they see us on the platform and see us in ministry, you know, but it's another of just personal. And I know when we sit down and chat with people, they go, you're so personal, you know, which that's cool. We should be. It's nothing special. We should be. But today is, you know, we've been trying to do podcasts every so often about just information about us, just questions that we'll answer to give the listeners and the viewers more insight about us. And sometimes even how we handle certain situations and circumstances. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do today. And we've mm -hmm. done these. We tried to, you know, just answer certain questions and because time go so fast we don't get but so far but we'll, we'll keep doing these at different times to give our viewership just some inside information about us mm -hmm. you know because i know when people look at you you know they don't know how to take you you're a complicated person are, are you serious you're a complicated okay, person okay i'm not gonna go there with you <laughs> i'm not gonna go there with you no well, you know people go past aisha <laughs> she looks in my soul mm -hmm. but you know you're you know but you're laid back you're up there's a lot of layers to you there's a lot, which is good. There's a lot of layers. You got a funny side. Past age has a funny but, side. Uh, yeah, you got but, a snorting side. I, I am, <laughs> but at the same time, depend upon. I always try. I'm, I'm usually discerning where you coming from. Yeah. You know, what's, what's... No, we don't want that side. <laughs> we don't want that side. She got this other, this other spiritual kill the demon. <laughs> <side>. <laughs> <laughs> like that though all the time but no not know. all the time there's a side but I, you know i want to make sure i handle stuff appropriately yes don't prejudge but make sure yeah. i understand where a person yeah no but from. i mean I no you have important. i love the fact you have different layers you got different mm -hmm. layers to you and um i've i've been privileged to be a part of all of them that i know of <laughs> Some of them are scary. That's not <laughs> nice. That is so not nice. But no, but it's good. And I love the fact that we... um. You bring out some of those sides. Yes, I, yes, I no qualms. Do. I do. <laughs> I just sometimes I want to stir up those layers. And That's then when I stir nice. them up, I go, peace, beast. <laughs> no, but I like when we do this because mm -hmm. I, I never want people to put us on pedestals and all of that. I don't, mm -hmm. I've never liked that. I don't like yeah. when people do that, you know, try to put themselves on a pedestal. And we've never wanted to do that. So episodes like this are good because they just give people some inside information, you know, mm -hmm. from us. So let's dive in. Let's talk. So, so what, what are some of the things we're talking? What, what's some of the questions we're, we're going to look at today? All right. So 
one of the questions I know people may want to know and, and find out more about is tell us a cherished achievement uh, that you had and what did it mean to you? A cherished, a well, cherished, a cherished achievement. achievement. Well, there's a variety of them. An achievement that you had that really meant a lot to you and why did it mean a Well, lot okay, to you? I mean, because everybody, th I can say you. When I got, oh, I could say Lord you. Lord Jesus. You know, that, no. was, a cher right. that was cherished. <laughs> <laughs> cherish the love. That was cherished. Okay, okay. No, that was that was cherished because I had to work hard, man. I had to bob and weave. So you know, so people would say he's going to say that, but I think for me, I'll give a relevant one. Okay. I'll give a which was in the last couple of years. So all of our boys are now adults. Mm -hmm. They're grown men. Even though our youngest is a 23 year old young grown man who's now in, who's in Florida, living his mm -hmm. best life, working for Disney. Josh was 30. Still looking to be married, if you're out there. Christian is 26, 27, 27, 27, 27, 26, 25, still what's the bed? No, no, but Christian's, you know, and, and he's married, you know, no grandbabies yet, but he's married. And I think for me, a cherished moment is I've been here for our boys the whole time. Like my dad wasn't there, stepdad, biological dad. And for me, there've been benchmarks the whole way benchmarks of helping them, you know, learning to walk, helping them tie their shoes, ride a bike, learn how to swim, you know, on tying a tie, shaving, all the things that my, my dad wasn't there for, I've wanted, it was my mandate to be there for all of it. I never wanted them to taste fatherlessness. And so for me, that, that you know, when, when Christian, you know, when Christian got married, it was like a completion from childhood to adulthood to have his own family and he's had fatherhood example all the way jordan has fatherhood example all the way and josh so for me that was a cherished thing for me irrelevant because i didn't leave i didn't i didn't I, we killed a generational curse of fathers not being there and i stayed and that's all they know all they know is their dad their mom and dad being together and their dad being in their life which sets a tone going forward to reverse you know what happened in the past. I always say God raised me up to switch the trajectory of our family and to kill things that that um, needed to be killed in our in our lineage. So that that's that's just a relevant one for me. Mm. Follow that. <laughs> I'm sorry, my goal in life is not to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it for you? What's you a know, cherished it's, achievement? It's, it's interesting because I was very curious just to hear what you had to you say. You didn't know what I was going to say, right? No, I didn't know what to like, you know. See, there's no layers of me you don't know. No there's different layers. than I love to hear what you're going to say when you minister the word. I, I don't want to. Yeah. I kind of have an idea, but, but I you want to hear you know, it fresh. I want to hear it fresh. And that's cool. And sometimes I like to hear these questions fresh. And Although then, while and we're then, on that. You know, so last night, you know, I'm trying to study the word, I'm trying to study the word so you can hear a fresh word. And Pastor Aisha is sending me these, what were they, these clips about us. I don't know. You should know about them because you send them to me all the time. <laughs> I, so, so I was just giving you a little bit so of taste So if the word isn't good, medicine. if it's a little distracted, it's because the love of my life was sending me stuff that was so on point. It was so, I was like, that's you. That's me. That's us. So, okay. So what do you, what do you charge? Um, I had to think about that for a moment because it's, it's like a cherished achievement. And when I think of a cher cherished achievement, I think of a, a, a moment in time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I don't I couldn't think of one particular achievement or moment in time. And it's interesting because it wasn't coming I, to the altar with me. You know. It wasn't coming and standing by my side. There's and so taking... many different ones. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Like, Go ahead. But honestly, sometimes I think in, in a message you just preached about, mm -hmm. I really felt that <coughs> was me personally. Mm. And I think that's why sometimes I have a hard time picking out a cherished moment. Because, yeah, because there's a variety of them. Well, listen to this, though. Okay. Sometimes I've been focused so much on the um what was it not enjoying the process oh not enjoying the journey not enjoying the journey <clears throat> and just getting to the destination and i was just focused on what i have to do to get to the destination gotcha. that you don't really enjoy the uh the journey. the journey yeah and then when the actual thing happens you're like 
okay, it's done. It's right. over with. Right. And then you're going on to the next thing. Yeah. So you really don't get a chance to really <clears throat> cherish True. the moment. You know, I think, you know, I, I, I think the biggest things, I don't necessarily cherish the achievements of myself. I think you're like what you kind of said. I cherish more so the moments of my children you know, in watching them and their yeah, achievements, yeah, yeah. you know, and just seeing <clears throat> them, you know, flourish. True. But if I had to just say for myself and my achievements, I can't think of one particular thing, but I will say this. I will say walking in purpose and what it means to me, me walking in purpose, walking as a pastor, walking as a mother, in every area of life that I know that I'm called to do, I think that's where I get the most fulfillment mm -hmm. in, and I can say is my greatest achievement. I think you know you have achieved something when you know you're doing what God has called you to yeah, do. Yeah, that's true. So whether it is pastoring, whether it's walking <clears throat> as a mother, um, in every area that I'm called to do at that mo moment, um, it's very fulfilling. I look at that as achievement because I'm doing what God has called me to do at that time. So I, don't, I can't pinpoint one particular thing and I, I think sometimes is because like I just said sometimes I focus on not the journey but, but the destination the but I have one for that I have one that I cherished for you so I have a cherished moment that was about you that I cherished in that moment and I wonder if I didn't che I didn't cherish it too no you did because so you kind of you said it, it you did not unless you, I'm having an over 50 moment no, and I no, don't no, remember you, you, because you said it but it was what? your birthday so your birthday when the, the staff arranged and a lot of the ladies, it was a lot of them that you've discipled or you've impacted through your discipleship program, they came on the stage and they dropped, you know, they dropped the card or whatever. And they That's all- That's an achievement no, though. No, it is because it was about your life has impacted okay. these people. Okay. And I was watching and I was like so proud. I was just, because they kept coming and coming well, and coming. Well, if you think about that though, if, if, if you want to go there and make that as one, yeah. that when you hear what people had to say, that lets you know whether or right. not you doing what God has called you to do um, was purpose. Yeah. You know, no, no. whether and or not yeah, you, yeah. you really are fulfilling God's purpose. Yes. That's why one of the things when, especially when we're in getting to know victory and getting to know victory, one of my favorite parts, which I know sometimes you don't like because you feel like, Oh, it's going to take too much time. But why I you love me to under the know, bus? Why, what's that about? <laughs> I like to know why yeah. people are considering making victory their home or why they've already made that decision, because it also lets us know, are we doing what God has called us to do in starting the ministry? Right. Are we on <clears> track <throat> or are we <clears throat> way off track? Right. You know, True. so hearing what people had to say, you know, and what they wrote, it kind of lets me know, okay, you're doing a good job for yeah, God. You're and your life, your what, life matters. What, it's making a difference. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes you can make a difference, but like you said, it may not be. You could be doing a good thing, but is it the right thing? Right. No, that's true. You understand what that's, I'm saying? But I think just watching that moment, you know, one of the things I've always enjoyed is you've never walked in my shadow. Because sometimes, you know, when, when couples pastor, the, the first lady, the co-pastor kind of walks in the shadow or gets overshadowed. And that's never happened. You really have stood on your own two feet. You're your own you person. You know, I could care less about walking. I know. No, <laughs> I know. I could walk in your yeah, shadow. I know. Be you could. Very comfortable. But it, you could. That's true. But <laughs> but it's as your husband, as yes. your best friend, and just your partner for life. I just I so enjoyed that moment. I mm -hmm. wasn't like in service. Like, All right, come on, let's go, so I can preach. I enjoyed that moment of just like my wife's life has impacted but people. But you enjoy watching other people be celebrated. I do. But you're like me. You don't like to be yeah, celebrated. I don't like to be you celebrated. You don't like to be it's on the necessary spotlight. And I don't and like to be on no, the it's spotlight. Not, I don't need it. And yeah, I don't. you and I don't yes. like to be in the spotlight. We like putting other people in the spotlight and celebrating yes. them. So, But that was just something I thought about as you were sharing. That was a cherished moment I had for you um, on it. So all right. Let's let's go to the next one. Yes. What's okay. what's something else we want to talk about concerning us? All right, this is interesting and I think it will help a lot of people this next question. How do you handle criticism and do you use it for personal growth? Oh, this is a good one. 
how do you handle this, this, criticism? Are, are we being truthful? Are you, excuse me. Is there <laughs> so we're any not other being. Way? We're not being. We're not being polite. Is there we're being, any other way? So how do you? Are you handle going first? Or am I going first? I want you to go. I was. I like to feed off. I know you, you like you me to set that. the tone. I love I'm the guinea to pig. Feed off of you. But no. So with I me, I think I know where I'm going to go. I but. think maturity now. Criticism doesn't bother me. Now I'm a, I'm gonna flip it in a second. But let me because I think anytime there's criticism, there should be self-assessment because the criticism could be true. A lot of times it's not. But if somebody's criticizing me about something, you're too hard, or you're this, or you were insensitive, or you're stuck up, or all types of people said, I think you gotta, you you have, and it sometimes might be short, a quick self-assessment because maybe I am that. Like yeah, years but ago. that's a good question because yeah. what if there is any truth yeah. to it? So, and I think you have a harder time handling criticism, especially when it comes from me. Yeah, because you're my queen. So from you, because other people, it's like whatever. Uh -huh. What other people, like I'm not really moved at this stage of my life. I used to be. I used to care Those way too much about what people thought. Mm -hmm. But now, I don't, and now, you know, just people in general, people criticize me. And if they're nasty, delete block. Delete block, you know, because I, I'm, I'm not bothered by that. I think you and I just taught, a, we're, we're, you and I are training some pastor, future pastors. And one of the things that we told them is when you're vision driven, you don't have time to be distracted by people. You know, when people talk about you, it comes with the territory. People are negative and all that stuff. You got to get to the point like Nehemiah. Nehemiah is he's built in the wall. You know, there's Sanbala and others, and they're they're trying to they're talking about him, trying to bait him away from what he's doing. He's like, I don't have time to do this. I'm doing the Lord's work. So with me, with criticism for the most part, especially in general, um, I'm, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't. Now I'll self-assess. You know, is there any truth? But if there's no truth, I'm good. Now when it comes to you. Like if you criticize me, meaning in a way, something I did, you know, something I did, I take that different because you're the closest person on the planet. Where if one of my sons or whatever, and and I, you know, I, I, I that because that's hold. We're in relationship, and there's more intimacy there. So that criticism, like if you tell me, you know, I'm I'm not paying attention to you, or I'm not giving you enough time, or you know, um, you feel like I'm cutting you off, or you know, um, if it's, you know, disrespectful or whatever, you know, like, you know, you told me the other day, I didn't include you, your opinion, you know, your thoughts and something. And, and that was the farthest thing from my mind, but it was true what you were saying. And it, it bothered me because I'm like, I don't ever want you to feel like I exclude you on mm -hmm. any scale. You know, you're too important to me and I value what you say, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, I did it. So that, that criticism I had to eat, you know, I had to eat. So I think there's always a self-assessment and if the criticism is true, then I need to deal with that. But you got to be okay with people criticizing you that know nothing about you. They're going out like you and I get criticized on social media all the time. Yeah. That don't bother me. So, you know, there's a self-assessment, but you got to wear that on your sleeve so that you don't get bogged down with stuff that's just not true. So, so I think, like you said, how do you handle criticism? Just like you said, I don't allow criticism for the most part. I, th I think everybody to some degree, like if somebody does criticize them, it, it, it may be, it could be like a little shock. Right. You know, for the moment. What's well, a lot of shock? How do you not like me? I'm a likable person. It may person. not even be something about not liking them. You know, it's it, well, it, it's something that you did that yeah. just maybe stirs in the wrong way, or they're just, it, they could be them just saying something to try to make you better. It may not even be a negative against you, but it could be something that they're saying because they want to help you to make you better, which can come off as a criticism. If they have that level in it your depends, life. It depends. You, know, you know, yeah, but not like a stranger. You know, um, like, yeah. you know, to me, strange, you got to have a child, please. Yeah. Child, please. So I think with me, with me, with handling criticism, when, when criticism does come my way. Because um, it doesn't come a lot because you are close to perfection you know what? in my eyes. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I think when it does come, you know, I, I think there is like a little shock value for the moment. True, true. But then you, I, I always try to say, okay, why? And is there any truth? I'm not usually, I'm not a kind of person where I will like, no, that's not the yeah, case. You're not, a not, you're not a prideful person. I am not like that. Not. I will really, really, when any kind of criticism comes, I will automatically try to do some self inspection. Is there, and ask myself, is there any truth to that? Or what caused them to come to that? analogy is it something i said is it the mm -hmm. way i said it or 
you know, is there any truth to it so that if I do need to adjust in any way, I can. Right. You know, some things you know whether you you can kind of if if you're being true and honest to yourself, you can know if there's adjustments you really need to make or is it maybe somebody just being uh maybe the, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? They could be uh jealous. Right. Are they being criticizing because maybe they're jealous of you? Yep. I think or they're ignorant, or ignorant or they assume something or they anything. assume. <clears throat> but I think even with that even if a criticism does come and maybe if I do know, maybe they just don't know or they're ignorant. I think my thing is always trying to get them, get under, help get them to understand. I'm not just the kind of person where like, Hey, well, they should just know better. I'm not yeah. like that. So, but I, I think I do try to always use it to, for personal growth because I always want to make sure that I'm not being offensive to anybody in any way and what can I do to to grow in that situation yeah um, I mean I, I think when you're when you're in the spotlight like we are because mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have a physical spotlight with our church mm -hmm. physically but then we have a virtual spotlight and when you're in that you get all you come across all types of people mm -hmm. people that don't know you people that you know they they and they just don't like you for what they see they don't like what you say they judge you and those type of things yeah. you got to just you you can't do what we do and and carry your emotions you, around. Yeah, I don't definitely you, don't carry my emotions. You can't do that it's because my, that'll get you all bogged suite. down. You got to get to a place where yet you're, you're not bothered. I mean, I give no emotional thought to that at all. But your relationships, mm -hmm. people that are that yeah. are invested in your life, that's a different story. Yeah, and I think because my number one spiritual gift is discernment, I can yep. usually discern <clears> if somebody is coming to me sincerely with a criticism that I need to do some self-inspection on myself to create that personal growth as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I love the fact you're a tough cookie. You're tough, like you're a tough cookie. Like you're not a punk. Well, that's because I've been through a lot in life. Yeah, you know? but I mean, you you just are, and you you're not a punk, meaning you don't back down. You hold mm -hmm. your course, and that can be frustrating to me sometimes. But I appreciate it that you're not a weak woman. You're mm -hmm. not. You know, you're gonna <clears throat> stand your ground, yes. and you're gonna go toe to toe with me. You know, you're very submissive. You're very submitted to my authority. But that has nothing to do with going toe to toe. You'll hold your ground. And I like that. You know, I like th that you're a strong, you know, woman. But I like the fact that you do self-inspection. You don't think you're above anybody. You don't you don't think you're better than and you don't think you're perfect. You know, you will self-inspect. So I think there's a difference because you can be confident, you know, which is fine, you know, but yet still be very self-inspective and mm -hmm. you you are you know you are and i think when you think about how to handle criticism is making sure you have understanding as to why or how somebody came to that Analogy. Yes. Like, well, what the Bible is it? addresses yeah. it. The Bible says be important. slow to speak. So many times I'll ask yeah. a lot of questions yes. to try to make sure I have understanding as yeah. to why or right. how that person That's a came biblical to principle. That. Be slow to speak, quick to hear, yeah. slow to wrath. Yeah. But we're, we don't. You know, the Bible also says if you judge a situation before you know all the facts, you're a fool. You're foolish. Yeah. So, you know, it, you got, yeah, you, you know, why does somebody think that? Now, here's the deal. If, if Pookie thinks you're stuck up, and Ray Ray thinks you're stuck up, and Sally thinks you're if stuck you up. You got 50 million and, people, you know, and the Joe same Bob, thing. and and Christian, and all, the, and if if different people around you that love uh -huh. you, if they're all saying the same thing. You got to eat that because there's something there. And sometimes when someone does say something to uh, say something, criticizes you about something, I think. You know, if you're not sure, you need to go to other people around you yes. that will tell you the truth about you and say, hey, such and such, this, such and such, you know, have you yeah. seen that? Do you, I remember you, know? you did that. I remember one time oh, where yeah. different people were saying, I was saying I something. I had an and, anger problem. And you, and you um, no, well, I'm just, and yeah, but it was, and, and you Why ate it Why are you though. so angry? You ate it. Because I was communicating you with ate anger. It. Yeah, you ate it. And, but you, you know, you didn't see in the beginning, but then I didn't you, see it in you, the you beginning. noticed different I ones, you but know, you love you. Enough people say yeah, the same and I thing there's got to be some truth to I it I watched you eat it <clears throat> and I you know I was just proud of you mm -hmm. because not everybody does that you know even though there's different people who love them that are saying the same thing 
And they just will be in pride and go, it's not me, it's y'all. Well, if all of y'all are thinking that, there is some truth to it, <laughs> some level. Yeah. So, you know, so that's good. So you got to handle criticism yeah. and grow from it. If it's legitimate criticism, it's, it's honest critic, you got to grow from it. That's what constructive criticism is all about. Amen. You got to grow. All right. Let's, because time is going, man. Yes. It goes all the time. What values are fundamental to you? And why? Oh, I think that's key. Like, so what makes you tick? Why do you do what you do? And why is that important to you when it comes to your values? Yeah. What values are fundamental to you? I mean, you and the why? foundation for me, the foundational value is God. Okay. It's, it's my, it's have God first. Okay. God first. That doesn't mean perfect. That doesn't mean you don't mess up. That's a value. A value, uh, yeah. Okay. My relationship with God. Okay. That's a yeah. I mean, for me. Okay. That I I mean because that that establishes every other value. Okay. That establishes every other value. So so example. I wasn't looking at it like that. Okay. But okay. But I mean, for okay. me, I think you know, for me, because that that establishes everything else. God first, and honoring His word, and living my life according to that word, putting Him first in my life is what I value more than anything. Okay. Because without that, I'm a hot mess. With it, I'm a hot mess. But <laughs> without it, I'm even more of a hot mess. You know, so for me, it's that, but then it's family. You know, and it's family, and it's starting with you. So valuing my covenant. My covenant with you is till death doeth us part. And that's in my heart, period, end of story. There's no ifs, no ends, no buts, no, well, if she does this, it's just, I, it's, I value our covenant. Mm -hmm. You are the only one on the planet. I'm in covenant, you know, covenant that way. We have some sovereign relationships, but, you know, but in terms of husband and wife. And so I value that. And I value that everything we've produced, you know, so, but I mean, that could go on and on, you know, you know, valuing, you know, family, just, you know, valuing family and integrity. And so for me, that's why everything starts with God, because I can't do that stuff, other stuff mm -hmm. the way I need to without him amen okay well i'm gonna say two uh then because uh, i wasn't thinking of that at first well go how you were thinking I, no 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 because i, I do want i do want to include that because if that's the case then definitely without a doubt you know my relationship with god is the number one value because if i think if you think about it everything i eat live breathe and sleep all goes back to why why do i do what i do right everything that i do is based upon what the word of god says yeah. and sometimes some, sometimes people have a hard even some christians have a hard time like well why are you doing that why? they're not like, about that life <laughs> they'd be like why are you doing that i'm like because the word of right, god says right it. right you know sometimes people are so more caught up in the feelings versus yes. Okay, this is what the word of God says. Even if I do allow my feelings to to, to get the best of me, I, I because I love God, I got at some point you don't stay out there. I, I can't I can't yeah. stay out there yeah. because I, he gonna check me. Yeah. And if I love him, I gotta get it right. I watch you do that. I watch you sometimes. You are so <sighs> I do something. You're so irritated. And I can see it, and I can see you just want to take my head, head and, and just rip it off yes, and I throw it outside. Do, but and, I don't because and, uh, right, I love I, and God. And I'm so glad you are saved and you Sanctified, love God. Sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire I'm baptized so with Jesus on it my side. It would not be well it in my not. soul. It would not. <laughs> it would not. I don't know if we'd be together today. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, I get <laughs> and it. And it's not like even it would be that bad. I'd be letting probably the very little minuscule things yeah, get yeah. the best of me. Yep. Because but I wouldn't I, I know how to you handle it, it right. I, you, you are a woman of God for real. Like you're a daughter of God for yes. real. Yes. Because I watch you do that. But I would say the other value, value that is fundamental to me and why. And sometimes I feel like it shouldn't be that deep. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, it is that deep. Okay. Honesty. 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 I'm a kind of person where just be honest with me. I, I, I value honesty. Yeah. Even if you messed up, even if you made a mistake, just be real. I can, I can deal with you based upon where you are. Right. But if you're not honest where you are, then where are we going? Like, right. what, what am I dealing with? Right. I love real people. I yeah. love honest people. That's why you love people that speak their mind. Because uh, yeah. at least you know at where you stand. At least I know where you're coming from. <laughs> 
tell me um everything but a child of God. But at least I know that what you think about yeah, me. Yeah, and yeah. And then we can go from there. Yeah. You know, just be honest. Honesty yeah. is big with me. No, it and is. I yeah. And, I, and yeah. because I'm a discerner of sp- <laughs> I'm right. a discerner. I can usually yeah. discern when somebody ain't being I honest. I love when I watch you flow in your gift because you'd be like, something's not right. <laughs> There's something not right with them. And I'm like, no, they're fine, honey. Nope, I'm telling you. And then it comes out. So I've learned down, I just, I, you know, man, I honor that gift in your life because you are, you really do discern pretty well. All right, we're running out of time, so maybe we'll do one more. One more, okay. What's your definition of a fulfilling life? Aisha. <laughs> no, I mean, that's part of it. But uh-huh. no, I mean, to me, to me, because again, we've, We've had, you know, worked out in the world, you know, career, you worked for a a big company, you know, um, we've gone to school, we've had and things and all that stuff. And that stuff doesn't fulfill you. You know, even, you know, not doing what you thought you wanted to do. You know me, I wanted to be a football player and I wanted to be an attorney and and the most fulfilling thing on the planet, the definition of a fulfilling life is walking in your purpose. Mm-hmm. Walking in your purpose, you know, because when you walk in purpose, if you until you walk in purpose, you don't understand this, you don't get it. But once you do, you realize there is nothing more fulfilling on the planet than doing what you were created to do. That doesn't mean you like doing everything that comes with it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you don't get tired, but it means regardless what's going on, no matter how tired you are, you get up another day to do it again. It is the most fulfilling thing. We've been doing this now for almost three decades and we haven't lost our joy. Amen. We haven't lost our peace. We haven't lost our drive. You know, you get a, a little older, you bob and weave with your body and all that, but but we're fulfilled. You know, when you're, when you're not fulfilled, you can't stay in something long term. Mm-hmm. You're fulfilled and you're still excited. People do things and work jobs and all types of stuff. They do careers and never step into their calling. Now, I, I want to ask this question before I ask this question because you want to ask this question before you ask this question. I want to ask this. Qu- I'm going to ask this question before I answer. Oh, no, okay. not even before. I want to answer this question, but I want to ask. You want to ask it and then the answer it because I I agree with you. That was going to be my answer. Is walking in purpose. Yeah. That goes back to that. <clears throat> that goes back to eat my answer to my first question on a cherished achievement. Right. I said my cherished achievement was walking in purpose right. in everything that I say, everything that I I'm going to tell our boys they weren't your cherished achievement. But somebody, and we kind of did an episode on purpose. We yep. did an episode on purpose. But somebody that may be just watching this for the first time, they may be like, well, I don't know my purpose. How, you know, how do I, how am I supposed to be fulfilled in life if I don't know what my purpose is or how to find out what my purpose mm-hmm. is? What would you say to them? Um, so one, you got to turn around and st- the first thing is an self-analysis. How are you made? How are you gifted? So if this person's born again, mm-hmm. if they're born again, if they're not born again, you got to get to the creator because he created you for purpose. So I got to get to the manufacturer of my purpose. But, you know, that's once what starts with a relationship with God. But after that, it's it's learning how I'm made. You know, what's what am I passionate about? Mm-hmm. How am I gifted? You know, because those things are tied to my purpose. What, 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 what do I dream about? What keeps me up? You know, what excites me? How? What's my gift mix? My spiritual gift mix? You know, you know what, 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 what's my drive? You know, like with me, I always loved helping people. You know, I always helped loving people. Mm-hmm. I was always a leader without the title of a leader. I was, but I didn't need to be the leader. If there was a leader, I could flow with the leader. So everything I'm doing now. I can look back and go, wow, that was there. And God helped me discover. So, you know, there's a lot of things we could say. You got to be willing, you know, when opportunities come to take advantage of them because they play a part of stirring up what's inside of you. I think that's why uh, Mm -hmm. Victory, you know, part of our mission statement, our vision and our mission statement is helping people to discover what their purpose and their calling is in life, which is why even very early on, as soon as you make a decision that you want to partner with victory and make it your set place and um, be what we call them partners versus members is one of the 
first classes we encourage you to, to take is to, to discover and connect. Yes. Because we don't want anybody serving or doing anything right. that does not line up with what their <coughs> purpose to do. So yes. we help you to try to, to start start to begin discovering what some of those things are so that you can be walking in it immediately, in addition to some of the Bible training center classes that we have as well. Right. Because we, you have a few different classes, too, that help you yeah. to discover your so purpose. Let me correct Correct. Well. The correct short answer is join Victory. Join uh, this church. If you want to discover I your purpose, not join this church. I was not asking that question for that. You give this six months, you'll be on actually, your way. But actually, when you said discover, it made me think of yeah, the Discover and the Connect the, that, uh, workshop that, is, that we have. That's the purpose of this church. Yeah. That The purpose of this church is helping raising up people for their purpose and their calling. Yeah. That is the purpose, you know, the short because purpose. Because we know, we know that fulfillment will not come in life. Right until you start walking fulfillment in your of anything doesn't happen till it's doing what it was created to do so then we're out of time we're way why? out of time miles monroe says where well, purpose is not known abuse, abuse is, is inevitable. inevitable shout out in heaven papa moms <laughs> so we we got to go with that so uh man there's there's more stuff you know we, there's a whole lot more so we'll get back to this we'll do some more episodes on this Amen. i think it's good because you get a chance just to hear us Amen. answer things and it really gives you inside nuggets of how we tick what we think how we're made Amen. so listen if you haven't subscribed what are you waiting for you've been with us for over 30 minutes now subscribe right now um, not only that like and share get the word out let other mm -hmm. people know because these podcasts are designed to challenge your thinking and help you really get momentum towards a propelment and think about purpose. why are you doing what you're doing yeah. what are you doing and why are you doing what you're doing yeah awesome all right we gotta go man and um we can't wait to talk to you next time but until then we'll see you again where on the victory, victory experience, experience.